Coming up on show 772, China announces their own standard for wireless EV charging. Do you think you'll be wireless EV charging in the future? Stick around and I'll tell you more. Plus, Tesla says we're reopening Fremont's factory. California County says, I don't think you are. Uh, Tesla patents a new battery cell that Elon has been hyping on Twitter. Uh, Kelly Blue Book love their Model Y. Finally got some pricing details. I mentioned this on yesterday's show for the Fiat 500e. And why Volkswagen are investing in another battery operation. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. This is what happened on Friday, 8th of May. My name is Martin Lee. I go through every EV story, so you don't have to. Uh, thank you for your patience as I've got back up to speed and dropped a few shows in little chunks. I don't like doing that, by the way. I like the show to be daily, but... You know, needs must and all that. I also got to say today, by the way, it's been a lovely sunny day, uh, late spring, early summer day here. My little studio is at the bottom of the garden. It's a an old converted garage made into a little recording studio, but it's got a flat roof. And I tell you what, this gets stinking hot in the summer. Right now, I've got a little connected thermostat thingy that is a smart what's it and goes on the internet because I'm a nerd and I like to see what temperature things are from my phone. I can see that in here it's currently 26.8 degrees. Yeah. You're lucky this isn't a YouTube show because I'm thinking of taking the t-shirt off. It's that hot. But let's move on. Tesla said, we're going to reopen our Fremont factory. California County that it's in said, I don't think you are. Tesla was told by the California County that's uh, home to it uh, that their only US auto assembly plant cannot reopen as a facility just hours after Elon Musk had been announcing plans on Twitter to do so. According to Bloomberg Green Today, the county in which Fremont is in uh, said in an emailed statement that it informed Tesla it did not meet the criteria to reopen. Tesla wanted to restart the factory on Friday afternoon, but Elon told staff in an email seen by Bloomberg News that it was going to be coming back at about 30% capacity, so not all the staff coming back, but they were aiming to restart today. They're not. Elon cited California Governor Gavin Newsom's announcement that manufacturers in the state would be allowed to resume operations starting on Friday. What Elon didn't mention, though, in his memo was that Newsom also said local authorities will remain, could remain more restrictive than state level. Another reason it's unclear whether Tesla will be able to produce vehicles, even if uh, Alameda, which I believe is is how I say it, uh, the county that, uh, that they're in. Even if they do allow Tesla to reopen, so many of their suppliers are in other states that are still on full lockdown. That's obviously embarrassing for Elon to go on Twitter to say we're, we're reopening and then for the, the county and the, uh, the local officials to say you're not. Uh, there's nothing quite as nasty on Twitter as uh, seeing a very upset billionaire who can't get his own way. I don't mean that in a, in a, in a horrible way, by the way, but uh, clearly he's frustrated and he's airing it all publicly. And I don't know, some people go about business in different ways. He's made a big success out of doing it all, you know, hanging his dirty laundry for everyone to see. And that's that is MO. He loves his, he loves his Twitter. He loves the rough and tumble, the warfare he called it recently of Twitter. So that's what he does. It's what he uses and 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 he's happy doing that. But you know, is kind of less ideal uh, when it's mixed messages. So we'll see what happens over the weekend. People now are talking about uh, lawsuits and 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 people getting sued for not being allowed to or not allowing Tesla to 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 operate. This story is definitely going to rumble on because Elon wants it open as soon as possible. The staff want to get back to work, and those people that want to buy the cars they make want to get them made. And I'm sure that whatever happens, it'll be done safely, and that uh, that'll be a top priority. So we'll watch this one. It's it's. Funny to watch from a distance, though, I must admit, all being played out on Twitter. Some more positive news, though, and Tesla has patented a new battery cell with what's called a tabless electrode that Elon then took to Twitter, obviously, uh, to say it's way more important than it sounds. And this is according to an Electrek report that I found today. You see, current cells that make up a battery pack, current cells that... Tesla use these cylindrical, like basically like the big AA batteries. They use a jelly roll 
design. The cathode, the anode, and the separators all get rolled together. And they have a cathode tab and an anode tab to, well, to connect to the positive and negative terminals of the cell. The new pattern is called cell with a tabless electrode. And I won't pretend to understand this, but it describes a new way to build cells to avoid the issues in which the current cells are made. For this particular new tabless electrode, Elon did say on Twitter, this technology is way more important than it sounds. But he wouldn't say any more than that. Uh, more is expected to be announced at Tesla's battery day in a few weeks by the end of May. In the comments section, somebody called Morris G had this to say, and I found it useful. I've read it a few times, and I must admit, I don't, still don't fully understand it. Uh, but uh, this is what uh, this comment said that I think, in a really good way, explained more about why it's important. Uh, this has the capability of greatly reducing the internal cell resistance for the current paths into and out of that jelly roll. By providing a continuous path from the local anode or cathode active material across the width to the minus or plus electrode on the can, it eliminates lots of current conduction in the anode or cathode backing foil in the longitudinal direction of the jelly roll. That means you can also reduce the thickness of the foil backing, as it isn't necessary to reduce the internal cell resistance along the, the major current path anymore. So, you get cheaper cells, because the tabs aren't needed. They're cheaper because of thinning, uh, a thinner backing copper and aluminium foil. You get better performance because of decreased internal cell resistance and less internal heat generation. Again, less internal cell resistance. It's really simple, it's a good idea, and I expect this will be licensed to anyone adopting a cylindrical cell design for high power applications like transportation, even for grid storage as well. Many of Tesla's competitors not using the cylindrical cell uh, form factor, using pouch cells. Even Tesla themselves are going to be using some slightly different alternatives in China for the base Model 3, but still fascinating to see maybe this is how they will get to the promised performance of the Roadster and even the distance promised of the semi-truck. Well, moving on, and Kelly Blue Book have got themselves a Model Y, which they like and did point out a few negatives, but they, they absolutely love the car. As for quality issues, they say that their car, B-Pillar, the B-pillar trim doesn't fit, neither does the lower bumper trim. The rear door alignment is off, the rear seats are uneven, and there's a loud rattle coming from somewhere in the rear. Uh, however, what they love about the car is things like the braking modes. There's three braking modes they love hold. Yeah, you can accelerate and decelerate using just the accelerator. In most situations, the Model Y will come to a perfect stop every time, one pedal driving. They say that if you want a pragmatic EV, look at the bolt, look at the Kona, look at the Leaf, all cheaper than Model Y. But they say Model Y's premium touches and technical strengths put this car in another class. And they're really big fans of the Model Y over at Kelly Blue Book, which they've had to test. I mentioned this on yesterday's show. A quick update for UK buyers of the Fiat 500e, a car that I love the styling of. Uh, we've had... Uh, we didn't own it, so why have we driven? Oh, you know, we had one on like a long-term hire. Our car went in for repairs that took longer than uh, were planned and so we had a fiat 500 for probably a couple of weeks actually it was, it was dead cheap we ended up paying uh, whatever the insurance didn't cover and uh, and my wife adored it and i must admit you know i really liked it as well it was small it was fun like a roller skate nipping through traffic big smiles that was of course the combustion version which when you really revved it hard did sound like it was running out of puff the all-electric version is designed from the ground it looks the same but it's a completely new car from the very first nut and bolt. Now, the EV, the Fiat 500 EV that's out there at the moment was a compliance car for states like California. Buyers in the UK can now put in an order, if you want to, for the first Fiat 500 electrics prices for the La Prima edition. Very Italian. The La Prima edition come in just below £30,000 threshold after government subsidies, says Electrive. Uh, Fiat has got the UK pricing out starting at £29,500, but of course 
That is after you've taken off £3,000 for the plug-in car grant. Uh, that's a first for the Fiat 500 spec, though. Uh, that's the first one coming. Uh, less expensive models will follow. So if you can wait to get a cheaper one, buyers can expect deliveries at the end of this year. According to Fiat, the La Prima edition is actually a bit cheaper than an equivalent Mini Electric. If you spec them the same, it's about £1,400 cheaper than the Mini and offers <laughs> a lot more range. Uh, 199 miles officially on a 42 kilowatt hour pack. Obviously less in, in the winter when it's cold. Maybe if you drive it around town sensibly, get a bit more out of that. Compare it to the Honda E. Well, the 100 kilowatt charging version starts in the UK at £26,000. Uh, after subsidies, but of course the range of the Honda E is, again, pretty low along with the Mini. So, it sits in that class, but it's doing almost double the mileage. And it's all about styling. I mean, I think when it comes down to paying that much money for that smaller city car, you're not buying it because it's utility or because it's best value for money. You're buying it because you like the look of the Honda. You like the look and the style of the Fiat. You like the Mini. And that's, you know what, that's absolutely fine because we buy cars with our hearts, not our heads. Talking about Nissan next. And Nissan have probably sold 500,000 EVs. I would hope that if they have sold half a million EVs, maybe there'd be a song and dance about it, a celebration, a congratulations to the fans uh, and also the, the people at the company, but no, they've been silent. So we've done the numbers, and it looks like they may have hit the 500,000th all-electric car globally. Uh, we knew it was coming because the Leaf, a few months ago, hit 450,000, and there was a press release on May the 5th that talked about 470,000 Leafs. Now, uh, within a few months, we'll get to half a million Leafs. But actually, that is probably going to be around the time when the Leaf has its 10-year anniversary because it was December 2010 it first came out. The second Nissan that is on the market, though, is, we've talked about it recently, the van the slash people carrier, uh, the EMV 200. You get a passenger version, a cargo version. Now, they have sold, I think, cumulatively about 42,000 of those. That came out in 2014, and that means that around now they've crossed 500,000 electric Nissans. Big achievement. I'd love to know if they've hit it or whether it's about to come or whether they didn't and aren't making a, a fuss about it. I was disappointed recently. Nissan have closed down their electric Twitter account. Nissan had a, a separate uh, Twitter account for uh, Nissan electric cars and, and fans. And they recently closed it and said, oh, please follow the main Nissan account. We'll be talking about EVs in there. And then last time I checked, not a single tweet recently about electric cars. And so, and there was a lot of pushback from that, from people going, look, if I want to hear about combustion cars, I'll follow that account. Don't force me to listen to, to follow a Twitter account that is just going to be tweeting a bunch of garbage about fossils. Nissan, oh man, I'm really worried. The more I hear it, you know, if they have hit half a million electric vehicles globally and not celebrated that, it's another it's another thing that really makes me worried. Like, they just don't care. They're like, well, we had the Leaf, had an early lead, we make amazing cars. We just don't care. They just like they just seem to be backing away. Them there's no kind of leadership pushing EVs forward there. I may be wrong. Maybe they're at like four nine 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 hundred and you know, they're about to do a big celebration. I hope I'm wrong. Let's talk Volkswagen, the joint venture between Volkswagen Group and what is the Swedish battery producer, they're called Northvolt, is going even further than it has done so far. They've now decided that Volkswagen are going to build a new uh, factory, a new uh, building and infrastructure, say more than one building, is going to be put up and paid for by... VW. It's going to be a joint venture, though. It's going to be called North Volt Zwei. Uh, the factory is going to produce lithium-ion battery cells to leverage synergies with the site at Salzgitter, if that's how I say it, uh, based on the existing centre of excellence they have uh, for battery cells. 450 million euros are being ploughed into this new building, this new project. New joint venture will then rent out factory space for battery cell production. At the plant, it's going to start in 2024, going to be capable of making 16 gigawatt hours of cells every single year. And back in September last year, Northvolt and Volkswagen established their another joint venture to prepare 
for the large-scale production of lithium-ion batteries in Germany. It is a key strategic thing. If you want to make a lot of EVs, you're going to have access to a lot of cells, a lot of battery packs. Who makes the cells? Who makes the packs? Do you buy the cells and assemble them yourself? Do you buy fully made packs? Do you just go the whole hog like Tesla's going to do at the end of May and announce they're going to be a cell maker themselves? Lots of ways of doing it, and it all involves really big investments. So more from VW. Well, here is our story about wireless charging in China. And China has announced a national standard for wireless EV charging. Now, it's based on Ytricity's tech. Uh, I've talked about them a lot on this show. Ytricity's technology is foundational to the Chinese national standard. Uh, the Chinese plug, by the way, the, the regular old plug-in on the side of the cars, is the GBT standard, uh, the biggest one in the world, by the way. That's because China's the biggest EV market. There's more of those than any others. So when they do something like this, you have to pay attention. Well, China has now ratified the wireless EV charging standards and published it and it's been announced on May the 6th. Standardization they say is critical to deploying wireless EV charging not only in China but around the world as well allowing any equipped EV to use a standard set of chargers. Well for the past four years Ytricity has been involved in the Chinese wireless EV charging process. Uh, Chinese car makers and their tier one suppliers have been relying on the standards committees to define what wireless charging would be deployed in China, and now that's been done. Ratified standards are a major market enabler in China for this new standard. Now, everybody knows what they're aiming for and can go for it. Lots of people think wireless charging is a, a bit of a red herring, but there's something about it that really fascinates me and attracts me for certain uh, even for charging your car at home, plugging in is not the most onerous of tasks, but still, wireless charging, very efficient, as efficient as plugging in, by the way, it's not any more lossy. <sighs> Something about it that I just keep, I just, it makes my, my sort of my mind, the ideas start running wild, all the different things you can do with wireless charging for... Uh, in, 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 in sort of industrial things like buses and taxis and commercial operations as well. And now in China, there is an, an official standard, so they'll get behind that. Question of the week this week is back on Sunday. No question this week because I'm kind of catching up on shows. Uh, join me on Sunday's show for a brand new question and get involved again. But in the meantime, email me anytime. Hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on YouTube. Well, thank you to every patron of the podcast. I mean it uh, so much. Thank you so much for all of your continued support. Uh, my premium partners are Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Brightsmith Group for Clean Tech Talent, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati, and mm, Audi of Cincinnati East. A Sunday show, I read out everyone's names, by the way, exec, producer, and above, and uh, to say thank you. If you'd like to know what it's all about and have your name on the show... I'd love to read out your name. Go to Patreon, p a t r e o n dot com slash EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>